let's say you're in the market for a sports car and your dream sports car is a Porsche 718 Cayman GT4, but you can't afford it. What's the alternative solution? Well, you can look at something like this, a 718 standard Cayman. You can pick one of these up now for about 30 to 35,000 pounds. And if you spend a good part of 20,000 pounds in terms of modifications to the chassis, the brakes, and an upgraded turbocharger, you could be left with well, like this one, a 450 horsepower manual gearbox track and road car weapon. So that's what we're going to find out in today's video. We'll do a track video later on when the weather gets better, but we're going to see what this two litre Cayman is like to drive with upgraded dampers, upgraded brakes and upgraded turbocharger. So like I said earlier, 30 to 35 grand buys you a 718 basic two litre Cayman with a manual gearbox. Turbocharged flat four, 285 horsepower. So where does the extra 20 grand be spent on? Well, 10 grand of it goes on parts. This one's got a Litpo hybrid turbocharger. It's been remapped by Regal Motorsport. They've applied the Olin's adjustable coilover road and track setup, which is bespoke to the 718 Cayman. Then it's got upgraded intercoolers. It's even got Brembo brakes. This one's got the EBC yellow stuff pads, braided lines, poly bush, that turbocharger now with the map and the catback exhaust is now producing 450 horsepower in a car that weighs 1,335 kilograms. Now, what we need to find out is what's it like to drive and is this actually the alternative solution to a 718 Cayman GT4? We are then in the 718 Cayman, as Kai would like to call it, an RS because, well, it's basically a two litre flat four Cayman that's been boosted up. Like I said, Litco hybrid turbocharger, Regal Motorsport, stage three tune, 420 pounds feet of torque, 450 horsepower. We're gonna do a track video later on in the year just to see how it's like once you start pushing it that little bit harder, but we're gonna keep it sensible. We're just gonna see how this car feels on a B road. And more importantly, do you benefit from these modifications? So, 718 Cayman, as you know, in many, many videos of the past, I love these. What makes them great is, well, mid-engined, you know, just a beautifully balanced car. Yes, I have said in the past that this engine isn't as exciting to listen to as opposed to the flat six, but hey, that's not the point of this video. The point is, is if you're on a budget and you want to do track days and you want to keep up with the big boys, are you better off just buying one of these for 30 to 35,000 pounds, spending 10,000 pounds in modifications? And also Kai mentioned that he also had to spend 10 grand in terms of labor because obviously, you know, to fit the turbo, to fit the intercoolers, all that sort of stuff. So it does add up. So we're, we're at the best part of 55 to 60,000 pounds, but we're still, you know, 30 odd grand-ish off a 718 Cayman GT4. But before we get cracking, this video is brought to you by Car Vertical. Now, if you're not aware with Car Vertical, then you definitely should be for when searching your next used car, as this website allows you to obtain a full report the vehicle you might like to purchase to see whether it has any mileage miscorrections, outstanding finance, accident damage that may or may not have been registered. It's simple and easy to use. Just enter the registration like I have done here on this Porsche 718 Cayman that I've seen for sale and it will show you literally everything. Use the discount code in the links down in the description to get 10% off. You can see this is more of an OEM plus car. It looks pretty much standard to the untrained eye. Obviously it's got the coilovers, these Olin dampers, and that's the initial first impression you get from this car. The way this thing goes over bumps is brilliant. It's so supple, it's taut yet very controlled. You can hear that flat four. It's, it's definitely a purposeful noise. It's not musical. Certain RPMs it's beetle-like, and then in other RPMs it sounds like a Subaru. But it's a purposeful noise nonetheless. Manual gearbox, all the control weights feel the same. It's standard cane, which means it's 1010. 
but then the faster you drive, the better this Olin's dampers are. I've been on this particular B road in many, many cars, and I can't believe how well and how beautifully damp this thing is. It, it, it takes it to another level. And the performance, well, it's boost by gear. So once you wind it up, 4,000 RPM. Wow. Obviously, we've got a big jump in terms of horsepower. Standard came at 280. This is 450. And if I was to compare the performance to a 718 GT4, this is miles, miles faster. In fact, this is borderline, well, no, I'd say it's quicker than a 997 turbo, or it's near enough at that level because obviously the power to weight ratio, 1300 kilos, or 1335 to be precise. But there is a joy to be had with this car. And also the brakes, braided lines, sometimes with upgraded pads, you get, you know, they get a bit bitey, they get a little bit grubby, you get all those noises sometimes. This absolutely fine the pedal feel is spot on it's not too grabby it's just perfect another modification that this came has got is a water-cooled tank now the owner Kai has put that in there because he does a lot of track days and on a hot day that's more there for just reliability and not to overheat the engine but this particular motor is running at 80% duty cycle, which means that it's not under any stress at this sort of horsepower figure. I personally think 450, you've heard me many times say this, 450 to 500 horsepower is perfect amount of power for road driving and track driving. Now, what happens when you drive this car a little bit more spirited? Let's see what happens. Well, wow. The motor, it likes to pull all the way to the top of the RPM. This particular car is running on the Mission Pilot Sport 4S's. Kai, the owner, puts it on Cup 2's in the summer, but obviously where we're in the middle of, well, sort of winter going into spring, 4S's, as you know, best in the business in terms of, you know, grip. What I love is, is I've driven many modified cars and sometimes overpowering it can sort of spoil the way it drives. Arguably the 718 Cayman's been, you know, criticised for being a car that was once very delicate and putty in your hands, to being a car that's a bit of a thug. For me personally, the one thing I like about these two litre and two and a half litre flat four Cayman's is the trade-off of noise is this chassis can take way more horsepower and obviously Porsche doesn't want to do that well not yet obviously they've got the gt4 rs but that's a different league of car this though with the motor it just wakes up the chassis and what i like about it is is, is it's that standard classic came if you want to drive neat and tidy you can if you want to be a bit of an asbo you can and it just feels the same yet more there's just a sense of quality to the way this thing drives I've said this for many and many a times, for many a years, if you just want to modify a car to make it drive that little bit better, do the brakes, do the braided lines, put better suspension, better dampers, and get it tweaked to a point where it is, well, you know, borderline perfection. And one thing I will say is, there's no way a 718 GT4 rides like this on a B road, so that, in my opinion, is already a plus point. That's thanks to the Odin's, you know, road and track setup. That is, that's the highlight, in my opinion. The motor pulls. It's boost by gear, but it just sings all the way to the top end of the rev range. Granted, we still got that typical problem with Cayman's long gearing. Is that a problem? Yeah, but it is what it is. Having said that, that's only a problem if you haven't got much torque, like the NA cars. With this, having 420 pounds feet, what that is in new means, I don't know, Google it. It just means that coming out of tighter corners, it just feels that little bit more lively. And to me, that makes the driving experience that little bit more exciting. Now, obviously, 
I can't tell you on the limit on the public road what this car is going to be like compared to a 718 GT4, but Kai was telling me this thing is close enough to 991 GT3s and it demolishes 718 Cayman GT4s. And I'll be honest, I believe him. I genuinely do believe him because this thing's an absolute weapon. It goes. Yeah, that's quite serious. These Olin's road and track coilovers, there's 24 clicks of adjustment, and at the moment it's on the 10th click of adjustment. So that's more for just B road driving. And like I said, you can just build a rhythm and a flow down a B road. And like I said before, there are some pretty awful potholes on some B roads I'm going through that I've been down in many other cars. And this is just a major transformation. It just means that you've got more contact patch, it just inspires you more confidence. The Cayman, as we know, is a brilliant platform anyway. It's one of the best handling cars out there. But these modifications that's been done to it just adds that little bit more to the driving experience. It's amazing how these small changes, I mean, the biggest change is the turbo and the performance, and there's no denying how quick this thing is. This, this is very, very quick, especially in the low RPM ranges. You know, a 718 GT4 would not know where this had gone. It's both on track and on road, I'm pretty sure about that for sure. I think a 991 Gen 1 GT3, I know that's a different league of car, would even struggle as well too, because they're 475 brake, this is 450, but this is a lot lighter and a bit more better balance. So, like I said, these small little adjustments and changes have added up to just, well, create a massive difference, and my word, it's brilliant. And the brakes brakes are just fantastic. You can just feel it loading up. Yeah, what a thing. I like this. Do I like the way the engine sounds? No, I'll be honest with you. That It's not that sort of car, but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is, is if you are a track day enthusiast and you want to keep up with the big boys and you, know, you can't really afford a Cayman GT4, is this the alternative solution? And the answer is yes. In terms of effectiveness, there's no denying that, you know, these modifications has transformed the 718 Cayman. I just wish I could take it on track now and see what it's like when you drive it on the limit. In fact, maybe a good idea would be to um, put this up against a Cayman 718 GT4, create a track video and see how the two compare on the limit. And if you want to see that, Put that in the comments down below. So yes, this is definitely the budget alternative to a GT4, and I'd even go as far as saying a GT3. The performance is, well, out of this league, 450 horsepower, but the highlight for this is the Olin's road and track coilovers, 24 sets of adjustment, and it is just brilliant. It just means that you've got loads of options for road driving, but if you are on a flat surface track like Hockenheim or somewhere like that, you can dial it up all the way to 10 and get rid of that roll. The engine, like I said, it's not the most exciting thing in terms of just noise, but that's not what this car is all about. It's all about performance and track day performance. On the road, at least, it hasn't compromised that lovely Cayman feel. If anything, with that uprated torque and power, it just livens up the chassis that little bit more. That pair with the brakes just means that it's it's just that bit more sweeter to drive. So yeah, if you buy a Cayman for £35,000 and then spend 20000 on it, well, you do have a car that will definitely decimate a GT4. But if you want to see a video of this on track up against the GT4, hit the like button. Also, drop a comment. What else would you have as your alternative Porsche? But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, folks, see you later.